Communication seems such a big topic that we often talk about it over there and not over here. We sort of kind of distance ourselves from communication as a thing rather than how we're doing it. And the thing is, we communicate every day. Whether we're around people or not, there's something that we're communicating out into the world. When we communicate for others, whether it's verbally in the way that we speak or even non-verbally, or whether it's when we put pen to paper or tap a keyboard, we want something to happen as a result of our communication. We have an intention. Whether it's clear or not, we always have an intention. And they fall into three categories. The first is persuasion. We really are communicating in order for somebody to do something. We want them to get our point of view, perhaps act on it. We want some kind of change to occur in another or in a group as a result of us speaking or writing. The second is well, we want to be visible, we want to be seen. And that's part of actually a sense of belonging. As social creatures, we communicate to interact, to belong somewhere, somehow. And thirdly, we might want to manipulate. It's a little bit more gnarly, and it's sort of based on the first two. We might have an intention that is related to power, power over others, potentially, to get somebody to do something, to have power over another, to make ourselves feel good by influencing through manipulation. And let's face it, let's be really honest, at some point in our lives, all of us have wanted to manipulate someone to get them to do what we want in some degree. So I do a lot of thinking about this because I just love stories and communication. It's in my blood. It's something I've always done. I've always had a focus on engagement and people and how we interact. So I've been looking a lot lately to it. Some of the science, there's some amazing work and some research has been done into kind of the science behind what's going on for us as human beings in our brain, our bodies, our beingness when we consume a story. And some great research has been done in the States particularly, but all over the world. A guy called Paul Zacks in the States has done some great stuff. And he's really got into the science of everything from blood testing to heart monitoring to brain scans to see what happens to us when we consume a story. And what sort of a story is it? How is it structured that actually strikes a chord that influences us in some way or other? And, you know, that gets leveraged in Hollywood and advertising and great novels. Uh, in many ways, people are doing a lot of great storytelling in places around the world, but I'm interested in democratising it. So we all own and tell great stories that can make a difference in the world and that we're really clear about our intention in telling them. It's not just to get our own way, to have power over another, to sell something to somebody that they may not want or need. That actually it's a communication in a community that creates community and communication for us all. So we get to work on that in my Talk Talk workshop about conscious communication and if you'd like to join us we've got a session running with a few places left at the end of May and another towards the end of June so look in the uh, message boxes below for links or message me and let's see what we can do and co-create. Kia ora.